Venice, the city of the canals. Today, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The floating city is made up of a collection of over a hundred islands and pieces of reclaimed land and is linked up by a series of bridges and canals which weave their way through the city streets. Once one of the heavyweight maritime superpowers of the Middle Ages, the formerly independent city-state dominated the eastern shore of the Adriatic Sea from its strategically situated position upon an enclosed marshy lagoon between the Po and the Piava rivers on the northeastern coastline of the Italian peninsula. The area which Venice now resides was long home to an ancient Celtic people called the Veneti. Although no concrete records remain, the city itself is likely to have been founded by Roman citizens fleeing from the surrounding urban areas, from invading waves of Germanic and Hunnic tribes during the twilight of the empire in the 5th century AD. The lagoon remained a safe haven for refugees during the turbulent times over the coming centuries and gradually grew in size. The last great barbarian incursion into northern Italy came in 568 in the form of the Lombards, who swept through Italy conquering much of the north, leaving just a narrow coastal strip of land in Byzantine hands. This included Venice, which now, being surrounded by hostile peoples, was forced to look outwards to the sea in order to sustain itself. Because of their isolation, the Venetians became increasingly autonomous, finally breaking away from the Byzantine Empire entirely in 726 after a religious dispute. For the first time, Venice elected its own leader, in the form of the Doge, meaning Duke. The Byzantines did reclaim Venice a few years later, but their authority was superficial at best. And in time, further Lombard victories pushed more and more refugees towards Venice, which further swelled in population and influence. Between the 9th and 12th centuries, Venice developed an independent city-state, alongside the other powerful Italian sea powers which were developing at Genoa, Pisa and Amalfi. The city was governed by the Doge, who in turn was advised by the oligarchical Great Council, which was made up of the leading families of Venice. They vied against each other for influence by building great palaces and churches, and relied heavily on mercenaries for their protection. The strong Venetian navy thwarted any armed opposition towards them, and set up a vast trade network throughout the Mediterranean, becoming extremely rich in the process and extending their influence first down the Adriatic coastline and later further afield. By 1200, under the guise of putting an end to piracy, Venice had seized large portions of land along the Mediterranean coastline. In 1202, a new crusade was called by the newly elected Pope Innocent III, with the end goal of reaching Egypt, which was increasingly seen as the focal point of Islamic power and the key to conquering the Holy Land entirely. In the first Venetian foray into crusading, the city offered to provide all of the ships and provisions for the expedition, in return for payment, of course. After labouring for a full year and putting off other commercial ventures in the process, the Venetians welcomed the Crusader army to Venice, but it was much smaller than anticipated, numbering some 12,000 rather than 35,000 men promised. The Venetians demanded the agreed price of 85,000 marks, of which the Crusaders only had 35,000. It was at this time that a recently deposed Byzantine prince arrived at Venice with a proposal to pay the Crusaders if they helped him to reclaim his throne. Thus began one of history's most controversial episodes. By 1204, the military expedition, which would go on to be called the Fourth Crusade, ended not with the reinforcement of Christian lands in Palestine, as was the Crusaders' original intent, but with the sack of the greatest Christian city on earth, Constantinople. The Venetians and the Crusaders stole most of the wealth and great artefacts of the city, and they installed their own Latin emperor in place of the previous Byzantine one. Countless priceless relics and artefacts were looted from the city, the famous bronze horses from the Hippodrome were sent back to adorn St Mark's Basilica and other works of immeasurable artistic value were destroyed to be smelted down for their base material. The Empire of Byzantium, which had thrived for nearly a millennia, was a direct continuation of the Eastern Roman Empire, never fully recovered from the terrible ordeal inflicted by fellow Christians, and after a long decline, fell to the Ottoman Turks in 1453, who had largely filled the power vacuum left by the decline of the Byzantines. After the Fourth Crusade, Venice for a time was the most prosperous city in all of Europe. Thousands of seagoing vessels operated by over 30,000 sailors perused the Mediterranean, making money through commercial ventures. That money flowed back to Venice and is evident in the architecture you see today. Between the 13th and 15th centuries, Venice held several of the Mediterranean islands and coastlines as its own territory, ruling over a vast commercial enterprise. By the mid-15th century, however, the growing power of the Ottoman Turks and the establishment of new trade networks outside of the Mediterranean had ushered in a new era, which Venice found itself increasingly isolated from. After a long decline, the city finally lost its independence to Napoleon Bonaparte at the end of the 18th century, and was later incorporated into a united Italy in 1861.
Today, the city is a unique open-air museum and a testament to the ingenuity of the people who built it. Thank you.